Hello, my name is Keith Fraley, co-founder and president of a company called 40 Geo. And we're here to talk to you a little bit today about the work that we've been doing in and around some of the Caribbean islands with regard to reef preservation and some of the analytics that we can draw from monitoring the movements of vessels in and around those areas. So a little bit about 40 Geo. We are a geospatial analytics company. So basically we use sensors that are connected to the internet to derive intelligence given where they're at in the world relative to other critical habitat or assets. Our platform is called Raptor. Raptor is our vehicle to bring data to our clients. Those solutions are grounded in ideas around exception-based surveillance, remote monitoring, common operational picture, supply chain optimization, and so forth. What you see on the screen here is a screenshot of one of our common operational pictures for an offshore oil and gas company. You'll notice that we monitor not only the location of all vessels, but helicopters, planes, and do the analytics around the locations where they are. So we can monitor distance from specific assets like a port or a pipeline or a offshore drilling rig and roll that up into analytics for historical purposes. Here recently, we've won a contract with the Port of Houston to provide them with what we call our port operational picture. It's the idea that we can deploy a AIS hardware and monitor the location of vessels in and around the port in real time, and then also roll up the historical information into analytics around utilization, and optimization of their assets that are critical uh, to the success of the port. So what you see on the screen here is a mapping interface from one of our business partners, ESRI, which is uh, kind of the global leader in geospatial technology. Our platform, Raptor, provides data that feeds directly into this application. This application is configurable and we can add the different data streams that we want to, to use. So on the left-hand side here, you'll see <clears throat> all of the ports and berths that we are currently monitoring. Uh, on the left-hand side, you will also see the, the current vessels within view. So as I zoom in here to uh, Bolivar, you'll start to see that the, the information on the screen changes. So the only vessels that you see now are the ones that are within the screen. Uh, as I pan the map, you'll notice that more and more information uh, comes up. You'll also notice that the time here is at 1.22 uh, p.m. And that is actually uh, the time right now. So these are real-time feeds. Every five to 10 seconds, we get a new uh, position report per vessel. And as we zoom in here, you'll start to see some of the information that we're collecting. So this is an area called the Bayport Terminal in and around the Port of Houston. And these are some of their berths You'll notice a vessel here called the APL Holland. And if I click on here, it will tell me uh, a bit of information about the specific vessel. Uh, so it tells me when it entered, the specific locations, the unique idea of the boat and the ship name. But also we can start together and put together a log, uh, all of the information that we're collecting. So these are 223 logs for this specific berth of vessels that have come and gone there over the last six months. So the reason that we collect this information is that we can do analytics on the information. So the, the Port of Houston was interested in understanding utilization of their assets. So what we do is we, we collect historical uh, movements of boats relative to their berths. So the ingress and egress, basically when a vessel arrives and when it leaves, and then we put that information in a historical log and from that we can roll up bits of intelligence. So you'll see here on the right hand side, we can monitor the total number of minutes uh, that have been at the Barber's Cut terminal over the last seven days. And I can change that to just the last uh, 24 hours if I want to and roll that up accordingly. So now you'll see a summary of minutes at all of their terminals for the last 24 hours. You'll notice that the information changes. So we have uh, pie charts that break down um, utilization by terminals, 
by specific births. And it's very easy to filter um, on specific terminals. So if we want to click on the Sims Bayou, uh, that will add the, uh, the Sims Bayou information and filter the entire map by, by Sims Bayou. And then you'll get a list of the vessels that have come and gone from there over the last 24 hours. This is kind of a historical log here. The way that we collect this information is through um, implementation of hardware that we manage. So what you see on the screen here is uh, three LTE based, so cellular based AIS uh, hardware kits that we've deployed for the port of Houston. And we're currently monitoring around 500 uh, vessels in real time for them. You'll see that the different areas here, sometimes we'll get boats all the way out into the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, but as we zoom in here, you'll start to see kind of the, the overall port congestion. So it's a very busy port, one of the busiest ports in the United States. And our platform is able to handle that information and, and, and derive the intelligence that our clients need. So at its core, what we do is called geospatial analytics. And the analytics can be done um, against Births, they can be done against docks or specific boats. But in the case of Reef Watch, which is a program that we've recently kicked off, those analytics are done around dive sites. So we propose, and we have a, an active pilot going on in Roatan, that we can monitor the ingress and egress of dive boats, uh, snorkeling boats, and fishing boats in and around critical habitat. And when we do that, we can keep historical analytics around it to roll up into bits of intelligence for regulators. So when you're doing reef preservation, you have two finite resources. One is your time and the other is your money. And, and one of those is not more critical than the other. But the reality is, is if we can start to figure out what parts of the reef are most heavily used by humans, then we can start to target where we should focus on our relief efforts. So Reef Watch is really um, kind of a trifecta approach. It's, it's the idea that if you have a stool, all three legs are equally as important. So we propose that we use technology, policy, and then a community to really impact change. The technology is what we can provide from 40 Geo, uh, which is the AI's receivers that I've already talked about and the analytical uh, platform that we provide. But we also need help from a policy standpoint in that actively mandating that all dive boats, snorkel boats, and fishing boats in and around your specific area of interest are required to have an AIS transponder on their vessel and be broadcasting at all times. Uh, we would also, you know, like to, to, to point out that, you know, we can provide tools that will help regulators verify and enforce those regulations by understanding what boats are reporting and which are not in real time and historically. And lastly, the community aspect cannot be undersold. You know, the idea that you have to get the dive, snorkel, and fishing boat operators all working together with the technology and with the policy from the regulators to really to impact change. And I think if they understand the big picture and that's clearly articulated to them, then they will they will have no uh, no problems actually engaging in that. So this is an example of some of the pilots that we have going on, or actually one of the pilots that we have going on on the island of Rotong. This is not an AIS pilot, but rather we've put specific GPS trackers on three, uh, three boats from a company that we partnered with called West Bay Divers. And you'll see here that on the left-hand side, we can see when those vessels have last reported and relative to what dive sites are out there. So these are all the dive sites. Um, as I zoom in, you'll start to see um, their names pop up. So you've got, you can tell right here that the El Rey dive boat, as of um, a couple minutes ago, was at this specific dive site that, at Butcher's Bank, right? So uh, if we, you can imagine a scenario where we have all dive boats reporting and we can start to drive real-time intelligence about what dive boats are at what dive sites, and then also the historical trends that we're seeing. So above and beyond the analytical dashboard that I showed for the Port of Houston, here's just a quick summary of the aggregations that we can do. So this is a heat map of dive stops. So this is the last 90 days, and you can start to see where the dive boats have gone most 
actively so that the hotter the color, the more red the color is, the more heavily um, dove areas. And it's our opinion that if you collect enough information about all of the boats, that you can really start to understand what impact is happening uh, by humans uh, at your specific areas of interest. Thank you for listening, and I appreciate your feedback.